Uh, I am extremely excited. Um, are we live, D? Um, I got to get Brent to hit the button on his side. Okay. But we're, we're, we're recording right now. so I like it. Well, hey, yep. let's chop it up. And this is real time, real deal. That's right. Um, That's right. We'll, we'll talk about this thing first and foremost. So why so serious run fest? Um, I didn't know it was going to be so intense myself. I was, I, like I said, I had high hopes, but uh, it turned out as good, if not better um, than I was expecting. Um, and as soon as I get uh, the, our, our Zuba's sunglasses, I will send you a pair of sunglasses and, and the metal boy. Excellent. Excellent. Ooh, yeah. No. Even the lanyard alone is, is fire. <laughs> yeah. This turned out like, yeah, exceptional. Absolutely fire. Um, well, let's just jump right into it, fellas. Um, I do have a quote, so let me just pull my quote. I'm prepared today. <laughs> I'm prepared. Uh, I got a quote from Gwa from Gandhi. Um, and Dwayne, I'm just going to roll with it. And when we can get on that eager to run club, great. If not, hey, baby, we're rolling with it anyway. So quote from Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And the reason that I want to talk about that quote today is because Stevie, like myself and like Dwayne and a lot of people that I work with, um, we're always trying to give back to community. And that's where we're going to steer the conversation today. We're going to talk about the Why So Serious Run Fest. We're going to talk about uh, who we're giving back to, why we're giving back, all those things. The first question that I want to ask Stevie is, what is Why So Serious? Why did you Why did you write the Why So Serious on your shirt? I have an idea, but I want to hear it out of your out of your mouth and, and, and in your words. Yeah. So the Why So Serious came about for multiple things. It was. It was fun from movies, of course. You know, you see Batman, Robin, and Joker. Um, however, it had a, a deeper meaning because I was one of those guys that if you handle your business, you should be able to have fun. And um, that was how I was living my, living my life and playing my, my profession. And I ended up getting in trouble for it. I got in trouble multiple times for handling business, then having fun afterwards. <laughs> so it was more so of a mindset like, uh, hey, hey, why so serious? That's that was the, the, the meaning, the message behind the act. And, um, you know, to have fun with it, which made everything tie in was, you know, the game that I broke out the Why So Serious was against Cincinnati, which had Terrell Owens and Ocho Cinco, who dressed up as Batman and Robin in their player um, magazine, <laughs> you know, and it was it only it only made sense. You know, it was like, OK, I got. I got something. I'm gonna hit them both ways with a double entendre right here. <laughs> I I remember that game well because when you scored the touchdown, I mean it was unexpected. No, I I don't know who on your end knew that was coming, but you know from a fan side of things, ain't nobody know that was coming. And it, I mean, what do they call it? A fandomonium that happened yeah. in Buffalo that day. It was incredible. Right, brother. Look, I tell you not like I we didn't know either. I didn't know it was gonna be as big, and we'd be talking about it what fifteen years yeah. later. <laughs> It's like we was losing at that point in the game, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just a simple conversation I had with Fitz. We was, it was a TV timeout, and I say, Fitz, have you ever had a comeback, man? And he was like, no, he came close, and we had a little combo. I was like, Fitz, let's do it. Just find me. Just find me. He said, all right, I got you. And that was just the start of something. I think Drayton Florence got a fumble return for a touchdown, and that got us started. And, um, you know, the momentum just just went on from there. It, it was special. And uh, another thing about that is it was close to, you know, my college, which is Ken University of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And um, we got a, a, a great community out there. They don't have an NFL team. So, you know, they got to come to that Cincinnati game and, and support me. And it was uh, it was a special one for sure. Man, that's crazy. Uh, let's talk about this Why So Serious Run Fest. So we're putting on this Run Fest. And, you know, we came up with the name Run Fest just to have like a, a tag, you know, just a a, 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 um, a cliche name, right? We wanted to have something that was catchy for, for our, our, our participants. But this is for all levels, all fitness levels, all backgrounds. I mean, even Dwayne could get in on this. Dwayne, you in, D? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I, hey, I support, brother. I'm, I'm here for the support. But they ain't running nowhere. Like yeah, it. hey, and that, and that's the see that's the beautiful thing about it because like we said, we chose the name Fest, the festival. When you go to a festival, what is it? There's everything you can do. You can do pretty much anything from face painting, food to interactive things, meeting people, everything. So with our Run Fest, you can run, you can walk. It's no competition, no pressure. It's just you versus you, you know. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And um, 
I, I love that. I love that because anybody can be involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sign me up for the fest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Competition. I mean, us three are competitors, right? We're all competitors. Um, but the thing is, is the only competition that we have there that day is exactly what you just said, Stevie, is me versus me, you versus you, I versus I. That's the only competition that we had there that day. What we're celebrating is togetherness. We're celebrating community. We're, we're celebrating youth athletics. We're celebrating the Exposure Com- Academy. Tell us a little bit about the Exposure Academy. What is it? Um, you know, and what, is it, what does it do for kids? Yeah, Exposure Academy is a movement that we started, and um, it was simply to, to dive deeper into the, the student-athletes. Um, you know, we started off as trainers. We, we wanted to get these kids out there and teach them skills at first. And then we seen that there was more that these kids needed. They needed, um, structure guidance. They needed communication. They needed a community to lean on. Um, in 30 minutes, wasn't enough time to spend with them. So my brother and I created exposure Academy where we housed kids from different locations. You can go be from different States. Uh, One season we had uh, guys from multiple states. Another season we had guys only from um, New York area. And our third, we had West Coast. You know, and what we do is we take them in the house and um, we house them for a week. We put them on internships. And uh, collectively with our community, we take them on, um, you know, different training sessions and life skills uh, sessions and get them in, in, in situations that's real, you know, as far. And when I speak on that, I mean, um, how can I say this confrontations, you know, you going out to a location and somebody bump into you or do something that we can't, we can't explain now, but these situations happen and we want you to be strong enough to be a leader and, and, and eliminate those situations. So we put them through roles and, and skits like that and just preparing the mind. That's what the exposure Academy is about. Mo- mostly. I like that, man. I'm gonna jump in right here, B, because like, uh, Man, probably about oh oh eight oh nine, man. Um, I started taking the kids from my church, man, and doing the thing. Started with the skills, you know, taking them out and uh, had the little cones and doing the drills. But you're so spot on, like you know, that's good. But you know, you're only on the field a certain amount of time, you know. Uh, and I and I know, you know, uh, NFL guy, you know, you, you the, the field portion of your life is like right here, but you got to deal with everything outside of the field, man. And so. We, we definitely saw that same need and, and it's dope that, that you guys decided to address it and to 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 take it to the next level. Because because, again, you know, you, you think about, you know, a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there, uh, you know, that that that's also a small bit of time. Can you think about the time they're spending in their neighborhood? Who else is talking to them? Who else is influencing them? But to be able to, like, pull them out and, and, and really do it. I mean, I, I admire you guys for doing that, man, because. Uh, that I, that's that's impactful. You know, it's one thing to say, it's another thing to do, but it's another thing to kill it, man. And y'all killing it, man. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's it's real. And and I, I like I feel it. I, I feel the uh it in my heart and my soul that that if we better these fu- this future generation, the world is going to get better. You know, it has no choice but to get better because of what we're producing. So uh, just trying to keep that positive mindset, letting them know that uh, obstacles are going to happen. You know, don't don't take a take on that why me attitude. You know, um, be a victor. You know, I was speaking with my guy Chris Champion in Vegas. Uh, we had our kick party with, and I'm, I'm sorry. And Chris, he said, you know, you gotta you gotta understand that everybody goes through something. You know, but if you have that play the victim role then you're going to go out and, and complain to this person, complain to that friend. Then you're going to find yourself isolated and alone as opposed to simply, I'm going a, I'm to a take on this challenge, you know, w- internally. And that's what our run fest. Oh, you, you cut out there. Is somebody trying to call him. He's a busy man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we lost all your audio, big dog. No, nope. <laughs> we read lips though. We're 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 we're, we're well versed in reading lips. 
the I'm going to jump in here while he's Go trying ahead. to figure out his Go audio. Ahead, but man, um, you know, you're only as good as your exposure. And and Stevie's doing something that a handful of people are doing in our country and in our, in our world society, whatever you want to look at it. But Stevie's doing something very unique because he's coming from a professional athlete background, right? What we see on Sundays isn't what's happening in life. Like everybody sees Stevie scoring a touchdown and celebrating, pulling the shirt up and saying, why so serious? They, we see that product on Sundays, but we're not seeing the, the confrontation. We there we go. There we go. We're not seeing that confrontation. We're not seeing the, the responsibility. We're not seeing the communication skills that he's teaching these young, young men and women. We're not seeing that stuff. And that in schools aren't even in schools are not even teaching what Stevie's teaching these young, young uh, men and women. And that, that's what it takes to win in life. Like I, I want to win on Sundays. I want the bills to win on Sundays. Everybody wants somebody to win on Sundays, but in the big scheme of life, man, we got to win in life. Yeah. And it's going to take more than, 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 than practice for Sundays. It's going to take that exposure Academy. It's going to mm -hmm. take people like Stevie and myself and you do and, and, you know, and, and, and furthermore, uh, great people, but Stevie, take it back, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I was saying, man, this is very important that we have these things and uh, you brought it up. You, you said the schools don't even teach it. But ironically, that's where I got not, some of the idea from, home economics, you know. That's where I first learned how to make waffles, my waffles and pancakes. <laughs> I'm a waffle man, you know. So it's like, how are these, how are these systems not in every school? Because when, mm. when I got to high school, they didn't have that. It was only in, I believe it was like middle school when they did this. And then they took the programs out in my area. Mm -hmm. So now what we do, we take kids from every, from any and everywhere. And we simply take them grocery shopping so that they can go buy rice, understand the, the dollar amount of getting a bag of rice, going to get a rice pot, rice cooker, and having that as a meal, a few, uh, you know, other dishes, as opposed to just going to the fast food and basically destroying your, your vehicle, your, your body. You know, so um, it's it's the little things, you know, yeah. And like you said, the little things that people don't see, man, like those confrontations and the, the time all away from practice when this kid is, is a he's a star on the field, but he's going through this and that. He probably don't even have nobody at the house. Some of these kids are homeless. And um, when I say homeless, meaning parents are out, are always gone and and they're, they're just home taking care of themselves, you know, so I probably didn't put it the right way, but. You know, these are situations that, that we deal with and it's real. And, you know, we're just trying to equip them and um, build them up so that they can be better than what, what's the situation they're in now. Mm -hmm. Man, fostering relationships, fostering friendships through the Exposure Academy, building confidence, man, building confidence in some of these kids. And a lot of athletes will have that confidence, but a lot of it's just it's surface level, right? I'm confident with what you see on Friday night under the lights, right? I'm confident. But when you get into life, a lot of kids, they, they, they lack that confidence, especially when they get into college and like, man, I was the stud on my Friday yeah. night high school football team. But then when I get into college, I'm just another number, right? And again, that's where the Exposure Academy comes into play because you're teaching these kids skills about life. How how do I uh, have a community? How do I have a conversation with my coach that, uh, you know, something's going on in my life? How do I, I deal with adversity? How do I deal with a breakup? Instead of going from zero to 100, I know how to control myself and have those conversations. I know how to facilitate, um, you know, a, a relationship with somebody from the opposite sex or the same sex or whatever. And I know how to control myself when things aren't going my way. That's the Exposure Academy right there. Yeah, and, and look, look, I'll tell you another story so that has to tie into that. Like, I was one of those kids that I couldn't communicate, you know. I, I didn't express my words and my feelings the way I wanted to. So I worked hard to where I won't have to be in a situation where I have to talk to a coach. But when you get to a certain levels, you know, it's just the inevitable. You know, you're going to have to. So once I got to – I cleared Pop Warner. I cleared high school. I cleared junior college. And I didn't have to utilize my communication skills. Then I got to, to Kentucky, and now I'm in a situation where I, I'm putting in the work. Coach, why am I not playing? But I'm only saying this internally. I don't know how to express this to the coach. So usually I would get upset. I would isolate myself. And if I would have continued that road, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. But I had this guy. I had a partner. I had a partner named Dickie Lyons. And he said, Stevie, you got to go talk to the coach. And I never talked to a coach. I never had to talk to a coach, you know. 
But with him pushing me in that direction or guiding me in that direction, I, I, I did what I needed to do with my, my thoughts, however I, however I got prepared. And I walked up there and I talked to the coach. And after that conversation, he, he gave me a chance. And now with that chance, I end up scoring a touchdown. The rest is history. You know, I, I scored two touchdowns, Kent State. And I never came out ever since then. But if I never would have listened to my partner or if I um, um, wouldn't have went and, um, went and did the due diligence of thinking through what I'm going to say and being prepared, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have made it to the Buffalo Bills. I wouldn't have done what I've done. You know, nobody would know me. I feel like I would have just been a, a upset, frustrated kid. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids are like that, you know. So I, I love that um, we're around a, a great community that's like-minded and has been through these things. We're not just trying to, you know, create stories of what we see and then try to teach kids. We actually been through this. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the future of what XA has to bring. Yeah, man, this, this whole, this whole podcast has been all over the map, but I love it because there's so much good content here. And this one goes out to not just young people. This one goes out to anybody and everybody that listens to this episode, because internal dialogue, that voice, that roommate that we have in our head is usually our worst enemy. Stevie, don't go talk to coach. I'm going to say all these things in my head, but don't go talk to coach. Don't go talk to the thing or the person or, or whatever, that, that, that factor that's going to control the outcome. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna talk right here, and it's gonna stay right here. And what that usually does, man, that that builds, right? And it builds, and it builds, and it builds, and all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> and 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 you're not alone. You're not alone. That's the biggest preventer from a lot of m the m masses from from achieving a successful life or a successful career, a, a successful relationship. It's that internal dialogue that 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 relationship that you have with that voice in your head. Yeah. And when you say like, you're not alone, that's why I, I intentionally grab kids from different locations so that these kids can come together and understand, Oh, I'm not the only one going through this or thinking like this. Um, and then on top of that, once you go to the next level, you're going to be with people that you don't know. So get comfortable being uncomfortable right now. And then when you get onto that, that stage, you'll, you'll be where you need to be. Mm hmm and it, it, you go right back to the exposure, right? So they're exposed to you and your academy, and then that's ingrained in them. And then when they go off to junior college or whatever, whatever the next uh, next stage of life season of life for them is, that that level ex of exposure is going to wear off on the on their on their surroundings, their best yeah. friend, their their spouse, relationship, man. That that's what exposure is, and that's what we're doing with this whole run fest and in, in, in the in the why it's so serious and handle biz, have fun, why it's eager to run. All this, man, is exposure. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it provides so many sparks. That's our thing is we just want to spark the mind to something that you love to do. And, and I want to bring up another story. So with our Exposure <laughs> Academy, we had kids that they, they was football players playing football. They come out here and they and I show them the realness of, of being a football player. Um, and we had this one kid who was a quarterback. He wasn't taking it too serious. He seen how real it was. He stopped wasting his time. Mm -hmm. he, go, he went to the basketball court to his true sport. He, he made his moves. He, con he contacted his coach and communicated with him. And now he's playing overseas now. So he could have been wasting his time just yeah. trying to play cool and, and, and mm -hmm. fill in. But we exposing you to the real. Like, don't waste don't waste the spot for somebody else that's really trying to, you know what I'm saying, make mm -hmm. it. Because um, he had the height and everything. He had the look, all that. But it's, you didn't have a heart. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'm not here to t turn you away, but I'm here to expose you to what your your strengths are and go attack that. Mm -hmm. And um and like I said, now he's he's earning money overseas. So, you know that's that's something that we're doing, and and that's a spark. You know, um you you're a runner. You guys are um your crew and your community is avid in a in a in a movement. You know the the adrenaline that you get. You know I have a a, a co-author in Charlie Roberts who he's an avid runner. And I send him um, ideas left and right. Hey, what about this book? Let's let's do something with this and that. He, I'm gonna go on a run and I'm gonna get this energy. You know, that's it's something different about it. Mm -hmm. Just being in, in movement and sparking these minds is mm -hmm. is something special about it. It's a catalyst, baby. And you know, you talk about that conversation, man. I don't know how many conversations I have from point A to point B. When I go for a run, I'm having a lot of conversations in my head. And and you know what what's happening in your life too 
really weighs down on you, good or bad. So like if you're if you're having a good day and you're out there, the conversation is in a positive direction. But if you're if you're going through something, you know, if you're going through something really tough, that that also wears on you. You're out for a run. Those conversations can turn south really quick. So you you have to be really good at steering your own conversation. Hey, Brad, you're not worthy. You're not capable. Yes, I am. You have to steer that conversation and get it back on the path of where you need to go. You have to be your own catalyst. You talk about a spark. I talk about a catalyst. You have to be your own personal catalyst. And, and that's where Exposure Academy comes into play is you are the initial spark. And you teach these kids, I have to be my own catalyst. When I leave the Exposure Academy, that's, that's maybe the thing I take is the spark. I take that spark with me. And when things aren't going the way I want them to go, I need to be that spark. I need to be that catalyst. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited for it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, another thing that you brought to my attention was for everyone 14 and under is, is free, free, free. So, so yeah. And that's about that, about that age where you actually start understanding, Oh, things cost money. So at that 14, 14 and free, you know, when, when they show up, they're not just going to understand, oh, I'm in here for free. Mm -hmm. Like 15, once you turn 15, you got to start having that mindset, you know, and understanding what mom and dad or auntie and uncle are are working for or, or are away for. So take your 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 book serious. Take your, your sport serious, you know, because um, things begin to cost. You know, it's the real life, real world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we're talking about this event, so I'm going to wrap this up a little bit here, D. But uh, so we're we're benefiting the Exposure Academy. That's where half of our donation is going. The other half is going to the Sweet Home High School, their cross country team. So that's that's our, our host, right? The Sweet Home High School. So we're we're donating to their cross country team, and this is something that I'm extremely passionate about. I was in education for ten years. I was a teacher for ten years. So youth athletics are a big part of my life. All right. So we're providing resources. We're providing opportunities for these young stars to shine bright at Sweet Home High School and beyond. All right. So, uh, man, get involved with this event, whether you're a walker or a runner or an in-betweener, let's make a difference. Uh, yeah. Let's get out there and, and have some fun, man. Indeed. Indeed. And we're here for it. We yes. are here for it. Yes, sir. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, uh, Steve, we already did the, uh, the do you know or did you know thing about you? Uh, so, I mean, unless you got something that you want to throw out there, I was going to skip that part. Uh, you know, just something that, you know, people don't know about you that you could say publicly. Uh, that's not incriminating. Do you want to do it? I'm going to give you the option because since you're a repeat guest, you're a repeat offender on here, man. Do you want to do it? Uh, sure. Let's 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 go for it. Let's All go right, man. It. So let's I do it. Think of, I got to think of something. What we got. <laughs> OK, well, listen, Did the video you know? will give you time to think. So here okay. go the video and give you time to think. Do you know? All right, video's <laughs> over. So let's go. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. OK, OK, OK. Do, did you know that I have a snake, a bearded dragon, two turtles, uh, three dogs. Oh, I'm sorry, four dogs, <laughs> and um, three wild kids. <laughs> and no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds like a zoo over there. Yeah, it, it, it is. It definitely is. It's the concrete jungle over here. I <laughs> love it. I love it. No, that's a dope one, man. Uh, man, that is that's really cool. You know, uh, the whole snake thing. Yeah, I'm good on that. And I'm sure. Uh, you know. Yeah, so our, our our pet snake is uh, called Bell Pepper. Ah. And we got her as a baby, and now she's a, a royal python, and she's huge now. Wow, it's real, it's real what they say. Like we had her in a small cage and our tank, and um, she was only so big. We kept getting our our tank bigger, and oh man, she's like she's so long right now. Hmm. Wow. So but yeah, it's, it's no thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. I didn't think I'll have have these animals but you know like i said the kids you know that, that's this is what we do it for and um you know that's 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 what it's about it's, it's a good and a bad thing though at, at to, to keep it honest <laughs> you know um <laughs> because yeah like i was scared of snakes I, I was definitely scared of snakes but now i'm not i have to overcome it yeah you know <laughs> i got a daughter that loves animals you know and, uh. Here we are. I love that. That yeah. is amazing. You know how I am, D. I got to take I, I take stories and I, you know, you, you apply them to real life situations. So you're only as big or you can only grow as big as your environment. That snake's a prime example, man. You have it in a small tank. 
it stays small, but you get it into a bigger environment, the exposure of that bigger environment, bada bing, bada boom. Yes, yes. That's it, you. man. That's the close right there, man. Why so many pets? We out of here. <laughs> yeah.